Hey guys and gals, it's me George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man, and I've got a question. Um, I was wanting to mount my chuck on the lathe, excuse me, on the lathe today, and I had this on here. Um, but as you can see, there is a recess in the back of the chuck, and this has uh, an, um, a raised portion here. And it seems like this should fit down in there so that this surface would mate against there. But I have a big gap. And I tried putting the bolts in there and sucking that down. And it, it's not pulling it in. And so I decided I would try turning that face plate a little bit. And cut the shoulder down a little bit here. You know, right in here but um, it didn't cut very well. Of course, I'm thinking that my tool may be on the dull side and I had to go all the way I had to go all the way in and all the way down with my carriage to get it to uh, get in there and cut and it seemed to be making sparks more than it was cutting so I'm thinking the tool probably needs to be sharpened um, and let me uh, set you up and show you what I was trying to do well I've done my first bit of machining and it took me a little while with some trial and error there as I showed you in the clip before these two pieces didn't fit together now it's a snug push-on fit and that's what I want. Now I can screw it together and make it a permanent unit. And that's what it's all about. Um, I learned a few tricks along the way. Uh, I found out that one of the things I had to do pretty quickly was to push my motor back and tighten up that rear belt. Uh, because it wanted to slip when I would start grabbing a little bit and in fact a couple of times it actually stopped uh, stopped the lathe head up here when the bit uh, dug in so after tightening the belt I didn't have that problem and uh, I can see that having sharp bits is going to be uh, a very needful thing and uh, so I, looking back now, I had at one time, I inherited a diamond sharpening setup. It was made originally for sharpening carbide tip circular saws, but I could have used it very easily um, for sharpening these bits here on the lathe. So I think I'm going to get myself a diamond blade. Uh, I got to figure out how I'm going to set it up. I have a couple extra motors and I could set one up with a, a table in front of it. Or maybe I could even use my little table saw that I bought that this uh, half horsepower motor came off of. Yeah, if I put a, put a diamond blade in that and uh, that would be my table. And it would be good for sharpening all kinds of things. So that's a thought. So it's working. And now I'm going to get the chuck on here. And, uh, and so here we are all together. We have our new chuck in place. Nice tight fit here. And I've got a piece of metal in there. I'm not going to turn anything. Just wanted to show you how it all works. Get our lead screw gears all set up so that it uh, falls along very nicely. We have our tail stock all painted up. And let me switch gears here and we can show you running the other direction. So 
that. But I thought this was uh, fallen in reverse for the main gear. So we're ready to start cutting and turning and twisting and whatever else you do. And of course I found out that when you use the machine it gets dirty pretty quick. But I'll keep, um, keep cleaning it and you can see I have this toolbox back here. I'm not sure if uh, it's going to remain here. I got this on, at an online auction very inexpensively and it's already got felt line drawers in it so I decided I'm going to put all my cutting tools up in here and my measuring tools down in here and other pieces and parts in here then these are these drawers here this is what was in it some of what was in it uh, pop rivet gun and a staple gun with pop, pop rivets and then the bottom drawer has several uh, well, I gotta tip you up there so you can see it several uh, electric uh, soldering irons and uh, with solder and flux all kinds of good stuff so it was a good deal and uh, with this front cover on here it'll keep it nice and clean and I can lock it down and I put these non-skid pieces up here so I can keep my wrenches I got this uh, all welded up today and cleaned and painted this is my uh, wrench for my tool post there's that one that's easier to use than this one here this one here is it works really well but it's it's just a little bit too tight you know you have to kind of work at it and I was using this one most of the time today I guess I could do a little hand filing inside of that to make it just a smidgen looser yep and my Allen wrench for loosening up um, the compound down here. Yep, for loosening up the two Allen wrenches, Allen screws there. And then we have our big wrench here for the tailstock, which is down in here. And finally, we have the uh, T handle which works for our lathe uh, chuck so that's where those are going to sit because I, I found that uh, taking them in and out in and out out of the whoops get you set back up here before I drop the whole mess taking them in and out of the drawers was too much of a pain so they'll sit up there and uh, as I have time in between other things I'm gonna repaint pieces of this maybe um, I'll at least paint this and um, well we'll see probably this won't be hard to touch up either so but she's ready to work and of course the first work she did was to fit the chuck to the faceplate and I learned that uh, my biggest problem that I was having was that I was not getting my tool down close to the center line of the face plate and I was actually cutting above the center line so it was cutting on the upside you know what I mean it was cutting on the upside. The, the blade was actually up above the center line and it's supposed to be at the center line or even a hair below I guess. So I had a hard time getting it down that low. Um, that's why you see that I have the, uh, the cutting tool is rotated down 
and not sitting level in there but it worked it worked fine once I got that done so I, I uh, I've learned a, a couple of items and uh, I'm looking forward to really getting into it now and I'm probably going to be needing to make some custom fitted bushings and stuff like that for the brakes and for the gas pedal and things like that on the goofy car so uh, yeah and just a quickie update on the goofy car I started to tell you about the brake system well I did get to tinker with it a little bit like these parts came in today right here the drum the hub and the band and uh, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna use this uh, rosebud down here which is uh, I'm not sure what it came off of but these these holes are not equally spaced and uh, this is just all sitting on here um, and this hasn't been this is just mocked together but the idea is that this clevis here will this will get eventually will get welded onto this shaft this clevis will push back on here I've got to do some modification on that because it's hitting on the drum but that's the idea and uh, that's that's the principle I'm working on anyway it might change in the process you know well, I don't know how much I had my hands in the way but there you have it we're working at it thanks again for watching guys and gals appreciate you all very much bye now